The journey was mad because there were days where I got so tied into this career that I said to myself, I want to really excel here. So in the first two months of me being at uni, I'd already decided I wasn't going to use my degree. I'd already decided <coughs> financial industry is where it's at for me. Really? Yeah, bro. Like there were days, like, bro, my man from uni will tell you, like there were days where I would go to lecture, my suit will be in the car. These are, <laughs> I've got a suit now. I've got a suit now. <laughs> I mean, I've got a suit now. <laughs> Right, testing, testing. So that looks fine. If you could talk into your mic. Yeah. Calm. Um, all clear? Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let me do my intro. <laughs> What's... <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> what well, the flight? <laughs> was it the flight that you were trying to clap or something? <laughs> I thought I saw a fly. I thought, I thought this guy was to kill that fly, man. <laughs> I love you. I thought I saw a fly, so you clapped up for a run. That fly's about to get it, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm dead. Yeah. I'm dead. No. Oh, man. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, when yeah. it comes to post editing, yeah. and obviously you got the video, 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 and you got yeah. audio, all different things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You clap, so there's a big spike in the thing, so that oh. the can automatically sync. <laughs> I thought you were trying to lock off one fly. I was thinking, right, oh, that fly's about to hold cord. <laughs> oh my god! No, don't kill me. I am dead. Wow, I am dead. <sighs> Take one, you know. <sighs> okay. You know, I'm going to leave that in. That is there. hilarious. That's going to that's 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 be the, the intro bit, the, the beginning bit. You know, the coming up, that's going to be the coming. Oh my God, I am dead. Oh wow. man. All right, take We're two. <laughs> We're back. And scene. And scene, literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> we are back. All right, I don't need to clap again because oh, I've just done it, that's fine. Say no more, um, say no more, say no more. <laughs> What's going on, people? Welcome back to the Black Print, providing aspiring black entrepreneurs and bit. There is something in my eye, fam. Oh my All right. god! <laughs> wow, I was gonna try and firm it, but might be that fly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it landed in my eye, fam. Flipping hell! Fly, dodge the club. Oh my gosh! Oh, god. that's his revenge, fam. All right, cool. Mm. Now wait. All right, take three. Let's go. <clears throat> What's going on, people? Welcome back to The Black Print, providing aspiring black entrepreneurs and business owners the blueprint to start your success story. I'm your host, Spaney, and today I'm joined by another very, very special guest. But before we get into that, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. The Fantastic Four, please. If you're listening on Apple Music, I'm going to need the Fantastic Five Stars, if that's all right with you. All right? Help me shoot up the charts organically and get into the ears of other people. Right, I also know, before I get onto my, my guest, I also know, and I'm fully aware, that I'm wearing the same clothes as I was last week, all right? That is because Ados episode was shot an hour ago, all right, guys? A little insight, you know, behind the scenes and all that type of stuff. So don't judge me. No, I'm, I do wash my clothes. I do shower, I promise you. Ados episode was actually shot an hour ago. And so obviously my episode now, which is coming out the week later, is same day, all right, guys? Forgive me. But that also means I, I'm still looking for someone to, you know, hook your way up with some, with some hats, can't be wearing the same hat in every episode, man. Merchandise. Come on, man. <laughs> Look Get that plug in. <laughs> Look your way up with some hats. Mm -hmm. I need some. Whoever's out there producing, making all this stuff, hit me up. Follow me. But hey, anyway, enough of my nonsense. Yes. yes Today, yes, guys, yes. I am joined by Clarence, the founder of CK Talks Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you yes, telling me, bro? Bro, I'm good, man. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> the energy in here is lit. I can't lie. <laughs> We've been having too much jokes. Oh today. my god! We were, okay for full disclosure. We were meant to start oh, recording at one o'clock, 
Uh, it's now three o'clock. It's three o'clock. Uh, we've been Sorry cracking that. bench yeah. jokes this whole time. We're enjoying ourselves. We've been enjoy- Are you sure you've been enjoying it? Because I'm pretty sure we Too just much, finished watching uh, Liverpool Leicester. See that team? I have to leave them to God. <laughs> because <laughs> that one, I can't. I have to choose my battles in this life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, but we're here, Oh man. my God, we're we are in here, here indeed. Here. Wow. Well, Clarence, yes, thank bro. you very much for nah. thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me, man. Nah, honestly, I see what you're doing. It's amazing. So honestly, thanks for having me. Nah, I appreciate bro. that, bro. I appreciate that. Wow. All right, let's try and be serious for yes. a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for those that for those that don't know who you are and what you do, yes. do you mind just running us for a little introduction? Yeah, of course. So my name's Clarence. I'm CK Talks Money. Um, I run a page on Instagram and Twitter. My Twitter page is weak. Instagram's my main sort of profile mm. where I talk about finance, anything to do with budgeting, saving money, mainly to do with property and get on the mortgage market, on the property market, and credit scoring. Those are my two main areas, even from a career perspective. So that's what I do, man. We add a little bit of fun stuff into it. We don't make it boring. <laughs> it's very short, sweet, and it's educational. Yeah. So that's what I do, man. Nah, you've definitely that's got the I energy do. for that, man. Yeah, As I said, we've just been cracking jokes all before, <laughs> before, shoot, before shooting. So now you've definitely got the energy for that. And yeah, I love, love it, man. man. Thank you, bro. All right, cool. So how long have you been doing that for them? So CG Talks Monday, I actually started in October. Oh, wow. So yeah, literally like... I should have started this about two years ago. Let me be real with you. And people always, I get calls all the time from friends. Oh, bro, I'm having this issue with my bank or I want to get a property. What do I do? And I was always doing this anyway. So this isn't something that I've just learned and started doing. I've mm. been in the financial industry for nine years now. And one of my friends just said to me, bro, you've got all this knowledge. Why don't you create a business? Like mm. he, his idea was like me being like a consultant. Mm. So consulting people and saying to them, oh, if you have financial issues, come to me. This is that. But I thought, why not create a platform out of this? Something that, if I'm going to be on Instagram, rather than just scrolling through, I'm just bait and <laughs> laughing at memes or whatever. Let me add value. And that's why I started it, man. So this year, October. It's new. October. It's new, man. Nice. New. And what were you doing before that then? So before that, so I work in finance. Mm. So um, my career started in banking. I then went into mortgages. I worked in banking and business and commercial banking for about three and a half years. I've been in mortgages while well, I was in mortgages for about four years. And now I work with like regulators, with um, FCA regulation, compliance, risk, fraud, all that sort of stuff. Wow. So and that's where I'm at now, man. Yeah. So yeah, man, that's nice. where the knowledge comes from. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. All right, cool. And so <clears throat> working in the finance industry and stuff yeah. like that, presumably uh, your education then, yeah. was it geared towards that? Was this always kind of Bro, like where the stars aligned towards? That's a good question because up until I was 18, I had one dream. And it was to be a professional footballer, bro. Hey. I'm not going to sit here and start saying, oh, my knee gave way and then I stopped. I'm not going to start giving you all them stories. But let's just say that the boy can kick ball. <laughs> the, boy can, the boy can play, you know? So, like, I wanted to be a footballer. Yeah. And I remember one day I sat talking to my mum and I was like, you know, like, I used to play for Watford's development team. Mm. So I went, had a few trials here and then. I had semi-pro clubs that wanted me, but I didn't have any professional clubs that were wanting to sign me. So I yeah. thought, I can't just make a living off being a semi-pro footballer, playing seven, six, seven divisions off the Premier League. Mm. Let me go to uni. Let me go get an education, further my education, let me say. I studied sports science, bro. Okay. Which is the maddest thing. I didn't even study like business and finance or accounting and finance, all these popular finance degrees. Mm. I studied sports science. So if you want to know about the anatomy of the body, I know. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, ask me about bank account. I had no knowledge. I'm going to hold you next time I get my pants off. <laughs> Bro, for hit me up, man. Hit me up. Like, oh, she, I got you. I got you on that one. Certificate to prove it. So it's like, I studied sports science. Now I was like, cool. Well, let me just go to uni, mm. live uni life, chill. I had a friend called Sharice. I'll never forget this because um, where we live in West, um, Metro Bank opened in Uxbridge. And she used to say to me, oh, like, I'm going to apply for a job that you should apply to. Like, just apply. And I was like, me working a bank. <laughs> At this point in my life, all I knew was football. Mm. I'd worked in a gym where I was getting paid, let's say, £5.50 an hour mm. or something. And I'd worked in TK Maxx during my first year sixth form. So I was like, a bank? Me. <laughs> I just I just applied. So I just sent the CV. My CV was probably just full of me talking about football <laughs> and how much I love Liverpool. I know that, you know what I mean? Like the CV was weak, bro. So it's like, I got offered an interview, like an assessment day. Yeah. 
where it's like, for those that are listening, it's like 10, 15 people who are all in the assessment and they have different managers from different areas of the bank come and, you know, you kind of show, you, you, you showcase who you are yeah. and they decide if they want to hire you. Bro, tell you right now, this is on God, yeah. I was the only person there not wearing a suit, bro. Bro, what did you wear? My guy. <laughs> when I told this story, my boys always laugh. <laughs> Imagine... Fresh Prince, yeah. You see how Carlton Banks dresses? Chinos, oh, boat yeah, shoes, yeah. shirt and tie, yeah, like, yeah. That Ralph Lauren vest. It wasn't even Ralph Lauren, it was just a vest. But it looked good. And yeah. I thought, I walked in, I remember walking in that day like, wow, already I stick out like a sore thumb. Because everyone here is in their suit. Whether it's your dad's suit or whatever, you have a suit on. I'm the yeah. only one not wearing a suit. I said, listen, I'm here now. <laughs> there was no error out on that it was your pocket jacket like, in like, what's good with the tree like yeah then it was with the pockets off here and the string in the middle man that string tied it on Proper t- bro, let them know, man. Here for business. Oh my gosh. So then, like, obviously, I got offered the job. Yeah, you must have done a man. Bro, I'm that reminds the, me of. I don't know. What you I see, um, oh, what's the film? Uh Pursuit of Happiness. Where it's like, what would you, what would you just do if uh, someone yeah. came in an interview with yellow trainers on? Or whatever. I had like the shirt with a page <laughs> on the face. That's that one of my favorite movies as well. But, um, nah, come on. So yeah, like, got, got the, the job. job wow, bro. got the job. I was a cashier there for nine months. Got promoted to be a customer service rep, mm. then got another role in business banking, worked with a commercial team, all in this, all while at university, bro. So that's why when I look at my journey, I'm just like mad. Like for me, I'm a big believer in, in Christ. I say to myself, God really did his thing, innit? Like, cause I had no right getting that job. <laughs> I couldn't even put a suit on, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like no man had suits. Mm. So it's like, why didn't I wear it? I don't know. But it's just, yeah, that's how my journey started, bro, man. That's mad. It's that crazy, mad. bro. <laughs> it's a weird story, but here we are. That here is, we are. So, okay. So, I've already forgiven you for yeah. the fact that you're a Liverpool fan. We yes, all, bro, this bro. interview almost didn't happen. Thank because you. Uh, when you told me, I was Yo, like, Everyone huh? listen, he nearly kicked me out, you know. <laughs> I nearly kicked, <laughs> he nearly kicked me out. out like. I said, Liverpool. <laughs> What's that? Come on, man. If you know me. Glory, glory, man, United. Mm. Anyway, so I forgave that we're still here. Yeah. And we, we've, we've been managing to balance since then, so that's <laughs> calm. But that's mad, man. So yeah. you turned up to the interview without a suit and you still no, got the jump. That's, I mean, congratulations. Thank you, Congratulations. Bro, so your friend, wow. Cherie, shout out, Cherie. Shout out, Cherie, man. Oh, Cherie, sorry, yeah. yeah. Shout out, Cherie, for real. Shout out, Cherie, on that one, for hooking you up with the uh, yeah. with the interview Literally. or letting you know about yeah, it. Yeah, for real. Other than, before that, you had no interest in, bro, in the banking sector? None, bro. None, bro. Like, all I knew was the account I had. Mm. <laughs> and walking past the bank on the high street, bro, no interest, bro. Even even look at the degree I decided to study, sports mm. science. Yeah. Nothing to do with it, That's you know. Mad. So, yeah, man, like, the journey was mad because there were days where I got so tied into this career that I said to myself, I want to really excel here. So, in the first two months of me being at uni, I'd already decided I wasn't going to use my degree. I'd already decided <coughs> financial industry is where it's at for me. Really? Yeah, bro. Like, there were days, like, bro, my man from uni will tell you, like, there were days where I would go to lecture, my suit would be in the car. These times, I've got a suit now. I've got a suit now. I mean, like, I've got a suit now. Like, my suit and that's in the car. <clears throat> and I'm leaving lecture, gonna go work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Putting in extra hours just to kind of make sure that even though I was part-time in my first and second year, I'm still doing the same amount as work of the people that are full time. Mm. That's how I got these promotions because I very quickly learned about work rate. If anyone that plays football knows already, when you're at, when you're at a team and there's someone else that plays the same position as you, cool, you might all banter. But when it comes to the game, you know I have to prove mm. that I am better than you. I have to prove that I can put in the same work or more work than you. Mm. You know, so that work rate was there from early, bro. Mm. You know. <clears throat> and so out of interest with Metro Bank, um, I've always found them quite interesting because yeah. I imagined when they first came, I pictured in my head that they were just going to, yeah. almost like how um, kind of Monzo and, and Revolution, ah, okay. I you. thought they Pins were kind of going to revolutionise banking because yeah. 
what, open Monday to Sunday, 7 to yeah, s- bro. I th- what, what was it what? like seven till seven, yeah. seven till eight or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven till yeah, they're just there. Like, they're just open. Your I convenience do, stack. Do, <laughs> do, do, whatever. So wind, sleep, whatever. It's they're there. It's open. crazy. You can go do your banking for real. So what, what was it actually like working there, bro? It's different, man. And I never realized how different it was until I met other people that worked in banks. Mm. I had a brethren who used to work at HSBC. Mm. I'm actually linked up at Union. She used to say to me, boy, like, we have it different. Like, I hate it. It's so boring. This is that. Bro, we had one, it was enjoyable because I'm meeting people that are a similar age to me, similar ethnicity or background, and we're all in the same place, Mm. you know? When they talk about revolutionising banking, it was good that they were open all those hours because it gives people the more time to come to the bank. There were people that used to finish work late and come in. You know, we had stuff like that coin counting machine that kids can come in and use. And it, it, it gave a different style, more mm. of an American style to it. Yeah, definitely, you know, yeah. I feel as if where they talk about revolutionising, where people like Monzo talk about revolutionising, mm. it's slightly different. Because yeah. Monzo's now more fintech or like yeah. Starling and Manise. It's more like you don't even need to come in, save yourself the stress. You, can, you have an app, mm. you can use the app. But Metro was more of a culture they were trying to bring in because yeah. in America apparently that's how a lot of banks are anyway so yeah yeah bro because the owners well the owner at the time the founder he's an American guy he um if anyone wants to look him up he owned a bank called Commerce Bank in mm-hmm. the States as well which was also quite a successful brand as well so he came to the UK to bring that business model over to the over to over here which is something that we've never had you know so it, w- it was nice working there there was a lot of space for growth because they were new so even the promotions I got, I already know that if I was at a Barclays or a Lloyd's, I might not have got that same recognition. Mm. Whereas at Metro Bank, because there was so much space for growth and they, was, they were brand new, literally Metro Bank opened in 2010. <clears throat> I joined in 2012. Mm. So literally two years old when I joined, there was a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room to learn. So yeah, no, it was a great experience, bro. I'll never regret working at Metro Bank. No, nice, nice. Honestly. And so you said quite pretty soon into your kind of your spell there, you decided that sports science wasn't really for you. You're not going to yeah, utilize man, that. You're definitely. not going to really get into physiotherapy or anything like that. Nah, Finance is for you. Yeah. What was it that sparked that? Why did you decide so soon that, that that was the case? You know what? I finally, for the first time in my life, found something that I was interested in. Okay. That wasn't sports related. Ah, okay. Honestly, bro, yeah. because imagine from a young boy up until when you start uni, eighteen. Yeah. Football, 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 football. At sixth form, it was study sports and business studies. I've now gone to uni, picked your um course. I've sports science, but I've now found something else that opens a whole new career path to me. Mm. That isn't just sports. You know what I mean? And I'm glad I made that decision because I used to say, oh yeah, like, I'll be like a PE teacher or something. Bro, I can't be a teacher, man. <laughs> I've seen how my brothers who are teachers come home straight <laughs> and that like, no, that life ain't for me. You know what I mean? So I'm even glad. And it just it just showed me so many different things, bro. There's so many things that I even know now, like for me, the core and the foundation of CK Talks Money even comes from that, mm. you know? So for me, it was just doing something different, something fresh that wasn't just sports, sports, sports all the time, you know? So yeah, man, that's how I got there. Nah, nice, yeah. nice. All right, cool. So you you decide this is the avenue I want to go down. Mm. You mentioned kind of towards the beginning when you're doing your introduction. I think yeah. like you said um, it, it it was your friends that said you should you should do this, yeah, and that you should uh, kind of make turn this into a business. Of course. So before that, then so presumably before you, you didn't really have the you didn't necessarily think you were going to turn it into a business. Was it very mm. much you wanted to kind of grow the career ladder at, yeah. at that time? Is that what you, you, you kind of look like for you? Definitely, bro. Like I've worked for, I've worked for corporate organisations. I've worked for small organisations. I've done a lot in the financial industry. Mm. Like I could, if I talked about my CV, this recording will be three hours. <laughs> so, like, you got to understand like, So like, yeah, I, I, I used to just think, you know what? Get a corporate job. Get to, I don't know, senior manager level have the big salary, Mm. get a house, live that life. I never ever saw entrepreneurship as something that was for me. Mm. And I feel as if whenever I've had to jump into a sphere of entrepreneurship, it's nearly been forced on me. Because twice now, when I've been self-employed, it's been because things aren't going to plan at work. Mm. And now work is no longer there. I'm now doing this. So even a bit of a backstory, I started CK Talks Money first week of October. 
And then everything's going calm. I had my job. I was working at a hedge fund at the time. And things are going good. It's all calm. And then first week of November, literally like 2020, I find out that I'm going to be made redundant. And I'm just like, what? Like, and this is real rap, bro. Like, I'm thinking, I've just started something. I've already thought of ways in which I could offset my income mm. and invest it into the business. I've I've had all the I've planned it out. It's on Excel. It's it's ready. Yeah. And then this happens. This wasn't on the this wasn't, this on, wasn't the on the list, bro. <laughs> when I was planning, I was yeah. saying, Baba God, please bless me. Wait, where am I planning? I say redundancy <laughs> like, after a month. I, what? I, I didn't write this. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's literally how it was. And then I was just like, yo, this is mad because mm. now I'm being forced to think in a different way. Yeah. You know, I'm now being forced to think like an actual entrepreneur because I feel as if I really respect people who are self-employed because it's literally you and you. Mm. You're on your own two feet. If you don't work, there's no money coming in. And I had to say to myself, wow, like, this is what it's really like. And I didn't even decide this. I haven't gone, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, oh, I resigned because I saw (laughs) a really good plan. Nah, like, I wanted to stay at work, but I wanted to do that as well. But then it was a blessing because... Without that time out of work, I would never have done all the things that I've done with CK Talks Money. Mm. I would have probably done weekly videos like I was doing at the beginning, but the connections I made, even talking to people like you, I would never have been able to do it because time, and that's why some, sometimes people say time is the, is, is the biggest commodity because it's like, you can't buy time, but when you have it, you need to use it well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And me being away from the job gave me that time to make content to sit with my sister and create a website, to reach out to brands, to talk to people, to do podcast recordings, to do everything, mm. you know? So um, it was kind of like, in a way, pushed on me, I would say. Yeah. Like, life pushed it on me, but that's how you handle it, bro. Yeah, you know? no, definitely. I, that definitely resonates with me as well. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Even with this podcast, for example, I had the idea yeah. for a little while, and uh, yeah, similar thing, we kind mm. of called up my work and said, service is no longer required. Yeah, but all of a sudden, you. I've got bare time on my on hands. On your hands, yeah, bro, <laughs> like, real. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Let me start this. Do you get what this I mean? And that's how I was able to this kind of get it. a lot of my initial episodes recorded and stuff like that. Right. And this is as it. you said. So yeah, it's all about how you bounce back from situations like exactly. that. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, amazing. And so <clears throat> back to back to um kind of when you were working and you decided that you were yeah. it, it, this is for you then. Yeah. Again, so at, initially entrepreneurship, you said wasn't wasn't really for you. Never so at the time you're cars, thinking. Man. So in terms of your work ethic then, were you yeah. kind of always just, I guess, naturally, because you said you want to make a career out of this finance yeah. thing. Yeah. Were you lapping up all the opportunities that work were giving you in a sense of, okay, you got this training, they want to teach yeah. you about this. Were you taking it all in at that time? Were you receptive to that? Every time, bro. Every time. And I would even advise anyone who does work in banking, if you can, I don't know if you're a cashier or whatever, if you have a chance to sit with the business banking team, go and do it. Mm. Sit with the mortgage team, go and do it. And the reason I say that is because when I was a CSR at Metro Bank, which is a customer service rep, so what they do, they open accounts, credit cards, service clients in a normal day-to-day way. I knew nothing about mortgages, Mm. but we had a mortgage advisor that would always come in, sit with us, and no one ever used to respect my man. I don't know why, like, mm. they were just like, oh, we already know our job, like, just, yeah, we'll, we'll send you the name and number, but I took a genuine interest in in what he was doing, you know, which is why when I was now graduating and I was thinking, the next step up for this role will be to do this job, but I don't want that, I want something different. And I looked at the mortgage area and I thought, you know what, I would love to be a mortgage advisor. It was through that connection with him mm. that I had the idea to go and do my CMAP exams, to go and look for roles as a mortgage advisor. So I was always collecting, bro. I mentioned bank, I, I was a cashier, customer service rep and a business rep. I've sat with business managers. I sat with private banking, commercial banking, teams that process loans, mortgage. Like I took advantage of every opportunity that came my way. And when we, when we were talking earlier about um, how it was working there mm. that's another door that Metro Bank opened for me they would never ever stop us from shadowing another team oh, amazing, sometimes man. even for a week like mm. remember one time I was in commercial for two weeks in private banking I was just there just <laughs> with them like even sometimes yeah. I'm not even talking I'm just there but you're in the environment you network you hear things you listen you learn you know so these are all things that you have to do so yeah I was doing that every day bro that's every amazing. single day yeah man yeah, that's amazing. And so, 
I guess obviously a lot of that <laughs> obviously yeah. lean into CK yeah. talks money and course, it's now yeah, yeah. you're utilizing those skills. So we'll, yeah. we'll come on to all of that. But then you mentioned that um, you tried to get self employed, was it twice before this yeah, or yeah. once? So including... this was the second time. CK mm. talks money was the second time that I did my own thing. The first time was as a mortgage advisor. Okay. So of course, like I was a mortgage advisor for just under four years. As and in uh, employment? Employment, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And then at one point in that four years, I said to myself, you know what? The money that we make as advisors, there's, there's like a commission structure. Mm. And I was thinking, I could actually do this on my own. I can do, get a couple of business cards. I've got all these connections here and there. <laughs> Even in, I used to come to, I remember I told you earlier, I used to come around there and do business and stuff. So it's like, I thought, I could do this. Mm. I don't need to be employed. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> when you start and <laughs> you realise that things aren't always as easy mm. as you think. Mm. This is what earlier I said I respect entrepreneurs because there's a certain level of risk that you take as a human being when you decide to go self-employed. Yeah. Because that um, protection of even just having a monthly salary, even if your salary is 25, 20, you have something coming in on a certain day that you know is going to cover whatever. Bro, there were months where I made five, six grand. Bro, then I'll go three months making zilch, zilch. I'm telling you, bro. And I learned this. And I, I was, I just did. How old was I? I, I was, was probably, that. <laughs> yeah, I was probably like 22 mm. at this time, 23. And now I'm 26. So you've you've learned all these things along the way, and it made me realize, man, the power in planning, you know, <laughs> because it's not enough to just say I know those, I know all these people. They're gonna give me business. That's calm. I'll have people on the phone. Oh yeah, like yeah, I've got free mortgages for you this week. Yeah, cool, cool. And I'm relying on that. I'm yeah. thinking, yo, he said that he's gonna get. He's got me. Yeah, he's got me. You're now calling them. And you're now playing tennis with phone calls. They're not responding to your message. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing tennis with yourself. I was thinking, yo, like you said, you had me, bro. Yeah. But that's how the game goes. You know, there were very few reliable introducers I had. Where I knew that, yeah, you know, if I if they say they're gonna bring business to me, they're gonna do it, you know. So that was the first time, and oh, I was crazy, bro. Ups and downs all the time because right. you had to, I had to be, bro. It's like I had to be networking all the time. Mm. It's like I worked harder self-employed than I did employed mm. because I could have a bad week at work when I was employed. Maybe not speak to many people. Deals aren't going through yet. They're delayed. Cool, whatever. Self-employed. Okay, I've got no deals to do. Fine. This day is now turned into a networking day. Yeah. My guy, I would have my laptop and my notebook here. I'll Google stuff like, I don't know, solicitors in West London or whatever. Calling them up. Estate agencies in West London. Calling them up, networking, going to appointments, going to appointments, giving them energy, knowing that nothing might, not even, nothing might come from this, <laughs> but I have to do it. Yeah. You know, these are all the things I had to learn that there's not always an immediate reward for every action that you do. Yeah. Sometimes you have to work and speak and talk before you even get a little bit of what you need from that, from that person. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that, that was the, that, that was the journey still. That, 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 that sounds tough. <laughs> Bro. That sounds tough. But just just quickly on that, yeah. actually, for someone looking to go um, self-employed in yeah. as a mortgage advisor, yeah. what kind of hoops and hurdles are there that you have to go through? Because yeah. I can only imagine, A, that I mean, you, you have to be qualified first. Of course, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm just thinking from a, because uh, I remember when I was speaking to a mortgage advisor, yeah. the man just pulls out his computer. He, he was employed by somebody. Don't oh, cool. Yeah, he yeah. just pulled out his computer and he's just getting all these. How do you keep up to date with all the stuff that's going on in the world yeah. of mortgage and interest rates and all this type of stuff? Yeah, so as an advisor, there's two ways that you could do it. Just to answer the first part of the question, you can either be what we call DA or AR. So DA is when you're directly authorized by the FCA, which means that any compliance, any business that you do, you take more commission from because you're only base to answer to if it's the FCA. When you're AR, you're an appointed rep. So imagine we have the FCA, mm. then we have what we call a network, and then we have you. You are under that network, but that uh, network is regulated by the FCA. Okay. So they work as what you call a principal firm for you. And sometimes they give you business, but sometimes you also have to find your own stuff. Mm. But there's no salary involved. You're literally uh, your own entity, but you're under them. Yeah. And with that comes like IT, 
a system and stuff like that. So the mortgage advisor you saw, he probably had like a system that re- probably reminds you a bit of Go Compare. You put all your yeah, information pretty much, in yeah. and it brings out all the rates. That's literally what it is. And that all comes with who you decide to go with. So being up to date with rates, it's literally looking at it every day. Because you can imagine, if you're literally seeing mortgage clients every single day, you might see someone with a 90% loan to value, 75% you will eventually learn what the range of rates are purely because you're always on top of it. But for people who aren't in the industry, it's just a matter of research. And this is why I always recommend people do see brokers because a broker might, I don't know, they might be slow, they might not be as quick as answering their phone. But when you speak to a broker compared to when you speak to a mortgage consultant in a bank, a broker will always have more of a wider idea Mm. of what the market has to offer. Whereas a mortgage consultant can only tell you what that bank they work yeah. for has to yeah. offer, yeah. you know? So that's pretty much how we used to stay on top of it. It's just constant research. As as being part of a network, we'll be, we'll be part of mortgage clubs as well that send us updates every week. Let's say stamp duties change or the Bank of England base rate or there's a new rate that our lender's offering. They had teams that their job was to communicate that to us. Mm. So there's, there's a bit of work on our side, but also help from whoever your network is as well. Yeah. At the same time, yeah. No, amazing. And yeah. so what... um. What happened to that then? So with the mortgage network. Yeah, so the, yeah. So with your mortgage kind of advice business, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like, eventually I said to myself, you know what, this is tough. This is a lot. Mm. And it's mad because around the time I was thinking it was a lot, I got a message on LinkedIn from a very large company. And they said to me, look, we're looking for people with your expertise to do some like regulatory work. And bro, the amount they were offering me I couldn't say no. <laughs> I have to be real. Yeah. At the time, I said, hey, this money. <laughs> I was really holding my bow and saying, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah. like You know, you have to act, play, play it cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll let you know. But in my head, I was like, Shit, let me send my CV now. <laughs> because this is sick. So, man, man, <laughs> man hit the email. Man <laughs> tried the email saying, yeah, straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Schedule sent it for two days Trust later. So it didn't look like... <laughs> Delay it. So I got offered a job and... I just thought, you know what, let's run with it, man. Mm. And once again, that opened my eyes to another part of finance because that was more so back office. It was the first time I'd had a role in finance that wasn't customer facing. Right. You know, I'd worked inside the branch. I'd been a cashier. I'd worked in business banking. So this is all face to face. But this is the first time that I was actually back office. And when you're back office, you learn a lot about the industry, but also a lot about the processes as to how things get there. So when we're working in a bank, we take all your DLs, we do your credit check, we do your anti-money laundering checks and stuff like that. But we don't understand the process that's taken to actually get that account to that person. Mm. So working in compliance now, it was like, wow, like there's a lot of checks that go into play before you actually allow someone to be part of your organisation. So it's a lot more complex than we actually think it is in the branch. Yeah. So when I got into that area, I said, you know what, I kind of like this. And it's a lot more educational for me. Honestly, it's a lot less stressful because you don't have to deal with human beings. No offence <laughs> to anyone that I've worked with, but human <laughs> beings are stressful. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, bro. So it's like, I was like, wow. Like, I kind of I like this. Mm. And I felt like it gave me a bit more space in my brain to do other things. Because even like I'm saying, I actually started CK Talks Money while I was in the other role before I got made redundant. And it's like, I know if I was still doing a mortgage consultancy face-to-face, I couldn't do this Instagram stuff. Because mm. even wear and tear on the brain that you have, the amount of brain power you have to use to be doing that and in doing this, it is a lot, bro. Yeah. And I was working for a company that had me very widely spread out. Like, at one point, I was covering regions whereby if I was in West, it was Ealing, Shepherds Bush, Chit. So, it's not even just one office. It's like four. Yeah. <laughs> like, I told you when I was around here, it was Croydon, Fort Heath, Mitchum, South Norwood. So, it's like you're covering an area. So, mm. all the mortgages that come through there is all you. So, mm. yeah, like, it allowed me to kind of see finance from a different point of view. And that's why I kind of thought, you know what, I'm happy here. And it allowed me to make my own personal plans as well. Mm. You know, because I feel like sometimes we get so tied into, this is my job, I'm doing my job, my job, my job. But we forget about what our desires are, mm. what our actual plans and aspirations are. You know, and I don't want to be in that position in life. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Nah, nice. And so that was, um, when, sorry? That was 2019, early okay. 2019. Yeah. Very early 2019, yeah, yeah. And so is 
that the same place that made you redundant? No, that's a different role. So that was okay. like the first one was a contract. Mm. Then after that contract finished, I went into another role, which I got made redundant in. And now I'm actually about to start another role in oh, is it? two weeks. Nice. So yeah, man. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro, congrats, man. Congrats, congrats. Nah, nice. Okay, cool. And so we've been we've been through a lot. We've seen a lot. We've seen it, man. We've seen, seen a it. lot. And uh, Sh- no, no, Sharice made you, um, was the Metro interview. Yeah. Um, because you, didn't you say it was your friends or was it just a group of friends that would always say you're yeah, good just, stuff like what? just my guys man yeah. like because I'll get I'll get all sorts of calls like oh, CK you know I got I had a credit check for a um, credit card and they said no what should I do and I'll be like alright cool bro let me see your credit file look for it boom 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 alright bro this is the issue you need to sort this out whatever whatever or I want to open an account where should I go or I want a mortgage how much can I borrow how much, how much deposit do I need? So it's like, I was always taking these calls anyway from mm. my peoples. And at one point I sat with my boy Temi and I said to him, bro, it's crazy because you lot ask me this stuff. And in my mind, I automatically expect you lot to know the answers. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm thinking like, yeah. how could you not know that? Like, you should know that, bro. Like, what you? But then I think to myself, I only know this because of what I've been exposed to. Mm. And this is why I feel like in friendship groups is very important to speak to people who are in different industries because yeah. you never know how you can help each other. Yeah. And it's like, I thought to myself, wow, like, I'm really adding value to my immediate circle here. But let me add value to a wider circle here. Let me create something that is a service to my community rather than just my immediate friends that I see on a week to week basis. And that's how we started, bro. Like, CK Talks Money started as a one episode a week, every Sunday at 6 p.m. talking about credit scoring or the mortgage application process or anything. But then as you get more into something, and you'll definitely fi- probably had this as well, where you just have other ideas. Oh, yeah. You just like, look, you're trying yeah. to sleep at night yeah. and the ideas are just spinning in your head like, bro. You have to get your phone out and take notes. I'm telling you, my memory, my note morning, section that. packed every single time. I'm just thinking, wow, like, I can stretch this more, I can do more with mm. this. And it's funny because I always wanted to simplify finance for mm. people. I don't want people to look at finances and think, oh, this is long, like, I can't be bothered because then you, you, you put your head in the sand and you have issues or you don't deal with them because you don't understand them because financial documents aren't written to be easily read. Mm. They are quite complex, even as much as a mortgage illustration. If you don't know what it is, you're never going to understand it. So when I did my first ever episode, I was in a shirt, a jumper. Oh, so you can wear a shirt for this, but you can't for your best. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> don't kill me. <laughs> We've grown. <laughs> We've grown. Come progress. On. It's Thank progress. Come on, <laughs> We're way, good, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I'm there and I did the episode. Very good feedback. Oh, CK, that was so um, informative. Love that. Thank you, bro. This is that. Sorry, what was the episode on? It was on credit scoring and why it's important. Okay. So if you go on my page, that's the first ever <laughs> video I did. Yeah. Just all smart. I have my ring light shining to make me to make <laughs> yeah, my skin look fresh. You know, like I was ready, bro. Tell you. So then I thought to myself, wow, like that was really good. Cool. I'm happy with it. One of my boys called me the next day. He was like, my guy, I'm gonna be real with you. I was like, your episode was good. Good information. Very helpful. But you need to bring your character into it. Oh, did you think it was quite formal or what? Yes. Okay. So he thought, could the fingers that you're putting this out as CK talks money, mm. not just talks money or money yeah. talks. This is you. We know you. And we know that the reason that people flex with you mm. is because they know and like you. So you need to show your personality in what you're doing, bro. Since I've started this thing, that's the best advice I've got. Mm. Because when I look at my page and I look at the things that I've received the most traction or people find the most informative or the most helpful, it's not the one where I'm sat there in my shirt that I should have wore to the Metro Bank <laughs> interview. <laughs> and I'm with that, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the ones where it's just like, bro, I've got certain video, I might even have a video wearing this jumper or like in a, like a tracksuit jump, you know what mm. I mean? Because I feel as if when we do things, we always feel as if we have to look a certain way mm. or... Um, come across a certain way whereby the demographic or the community of people that you're probably going to reach the most are the people who want to hear you as you are yeah you know and it's a conversation i have with my friends all the time there's people that i'm going to speak to tomorrow that i'm not going to be able to reach out to you're going to speak to them though and they're going to be like 
I get Darren, you know, I, I understand my man still, I get it, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's just how, I'm, and it really taught me that when you're doing things, especially when it's your own personal brand, yeah, be yourself yeah, every time, bro, because I'm so glad that I don't, that I didn't continue with the shirt and thing because it's like, what's the point of me doing that and then I come off the camera and I'm doing, baby, welcome to the party and I'm, I'm, and I'm being myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, and eventually, cause imagine, bro, imagine you saw all my videos, I'm in a suit, I'm in a shirt. Yeah. And I pull up today like this. Yeah. You're going to be like, what happened for my man? Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, 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 what's yeah, going yeah. on here? Like, yeah. I thought he was... Where's yeah. the suit? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? I must have thought this was a metro bag. Bro, trust me, like. What's going on? I'm going to do another take. I'm going to do the interview again. <laughs> so, like. <laughs> so, like, yeah, bro. Like, I just said to myself, I'm just going to be me, man. Yeah. Like, bro, like, for those who have or haven't seen my page, there's videos on my page where I've done, like, TikTok style videos and there's Afro beats playing where like I'm doing like I didn't banter to it mm. you know and that's the feedback that I get a lot is that you make it look fun yeah you make you simplify but you make it fun as well because I'm not I'm not a boring person bro I don't like to just sit there and just look at stuff and just be bored I like things that are entertaining but educational mm. I know I remember when I was in school the best sessions we had were the ones that were fun but the educational. That's why everyone yeah. loves science because there's always that fun element yeah, to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's always that, but no one likes reading anthology, bro. That's why like, on the last day of school, a certain man started, <laughs> started burning their anthology book. <laughs> certain man was moving mad in the field, burning the book. Like, what's going on? Because it's boring. Facts. You know? So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, especially because I'm passionate about reaching out to younger people as well. Mm. You know? So I'm thinking, okay university, first, second and third year. Let's say, let's just say the age is 18 to 21. I know people go to uni at different ages, but I think to myself, when I was that age, what am I going to appeal, more, what's going to be more appealing to me? Mm. A guy who rocks up, looking like he just came from the city with a briefcase talking about finance, or a guy who comes across like me, I can tell he's being genuine and being himself, and he's still educating us. Mm. That's why I changed my approach with CK Talks Money. Because I don't want to just reach out to the people in the city. If they want to watch my stuff, they can because the information is still pure and it's still clean. Yeah. But I also do want to reach out to those who are never going to hear this ever. They're not going to hear this at home or with their brethren. They're only going to hear it from someone like me who understands them but understands finance as well. Yeah. So, yeah, man. No. That's how we do it. Nice, yeah, nice, man. nice. And so... October or just before October mm. 2020. 2020, yeah. When uh when you decided that you were gonna start this. Yeah. What 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 was going through your head? How were you feeling? Was there yeah. were, were you feeling almost like cause I think what 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 I'm trying to get at is kind of it's one of those <laughs> things where it's different, obviously. You've spent all this time, you've been telling your friends or you've been helping your friends and as you said, kind of mm. adding value yeah. within your inner circle. But then when it comes to, okay, I'm going to start charging for this advice or I'm mm. going to, how do you feel? That's such a good question, bro. Because it's funny that like, I, have, I have a friend called Atto, yeah. Savvy Wallet is his page on Instagram. So hold, hold, hold tight, Savvy Wallet as well. And By the way, I have a rule on this on this podcast. Yeah. When you shout at people out, like, you have to plug this episode to them. You have to tell them. Oh yeah, 100. Oh, bro, that's a given. No, no, no. Bro, he'll probably be here if he could, sat over there. Like, <laughs> so it's like, I started, and of course, so deep the thought process. I've started, I'm in a job, making a salary. People ask me for free advice, I have no issue. But then I've been made redundant. So I'm thinking, yo, I don't have an income right now. Should I start charging for this? And I had a conversation with someone who's a very, someone who I really do look up to and like a mentor to me. And he said to me, look bro, don't feel bad about charging people because he does what I do but he's been in this thing for let's say 15 years long time he said to me look we have the same qualifications we do similar stuff but I've been here longer and I understand the industry more I charge about £300 per appointment he told me straight up he said £300 I have people who who pay me that gladly to have a conversation about their finances so I said okay but why shouldn't I just do it for free and just give back he said, bro, it's all good giving back, but when you do things for free a lot of the time, it decreases the value of the information that you're given out. 
you know what I mean especially if you're genuinely helping people and you're genuinely adding value to it yeah don't feel some type of way about charging people and it's weird because it reminded me of when I first started as a mortgage broker I used to feel a way about charging people I used mm. to feel like oh like the company says I have to charge them this but I feel a bit bad because especially when you meet a fellow brother like bro if you put if you sat in front of me as a mortgage advisor as you are now yeah I couldn't charge you bro <laughs> Oh, because when you. I see you, yeah, but I'm gonna charge you, dog. Because <laughs> when I see people, especially people who I can tell come from a similar background to me, you know, like I'm thinking, rah, like I need to look after this girl, I need to look after auntie, or you know what I mean? Like yeah. I just have that feeling, but that's where sometimes you have to separate your business model from your personal views. Mm. And I had to learn that quickly because before you know it, if not, you'll spend your time doing everything that you do for free. Yeah, you know, and someone offers you it for free, you're not gonna say no. They're all gonna say yes. <laughs> no one's gonna say for free. No, let me pay you the money. Like they're gonna be like, ah, free. God bless yeah. you, my son. I'm, I'm, I pray for you. That's what they'll be saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what it will be. Yeah. So it's like I just had to learn that. Cool. I want to do good for people. I want to bless people with my information and with what I'm with what I'm giving or telling them. But I need to also find a balance in between doing that and making sure that I myself. And being paid for what I'm doing as mm. well, because no large organization got large by giving out freebies to everyone yeah. because they felt as if it should be. You know what I mean? And I feel like as a community, we need to start learning that. Yeah, I did a tweet on my page that went somewhat viral. I don't know. There were some pages of like three, four hundred thousand followers that reposted it. The, the post ended up having like nearly a thousand likes, like five hundred shares, and it said something like, um, "Charging what." Know, know your price and don't feel some type of way about charging what you're worth don't be offended no don't be worried about offending people because you are charging them mm. what's offensive is doing work working your whatever off and feeling undervalued you're, offen you're being offensive to yourself in that sense yeah. so that's when I realised you know what find a balance CK find a balance between giving out good information and a price and what I charge I'll charge a lot like £50 per appointment so it's nothing like what my mental charges which is like 300 minimum but it's still something so mm. I know that I'm receiving something from what I'm doing and that person knows that in that time from where we're talking it's just me and you and you're getting all the information that you can get mm. you know so yeah man nah, nice yeah. nice nice Boy, and so um, <clears throat> just to um, clarify for the listeners, yeah, what range of services do you provide? Yeah, so the main two, the two main services I provide, firstly, is the credit score review, mm. which has been the most popular one. I don't know why everyone has bad credit. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, I don't know why. I don't. Bro, we kind of know why. We don't get taught this stuff, man. No, it's true. We don't get taught this stuff. Like, that's the most popular one, bro. Yeah. The amount of messages I get, oh, I'm like my credit score is really low, I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. So what I will do with that one is, we'll have a chat, we we'll talk about it, what's your issue? Also, the big question I ask is, what have you tried to apply for that you've been declined for? Mm. Because it's good for me to understand the level of lending or loan you're trying to get. If it's at a level of, you can't even get a bank account, we have a problem because something has happened that is stopping you even getting a bank account. So I will look at the credit file, I'll review it, and I'll create a plan with you. Mm. I'll say, cool, this is where your credit score is now. This is what we need to do. We need to do this, this, and this. Or that thing that you're doing, let's say it's, I don't know, buy now, pay laters, or um, pay their loans. You need to stop that. And this is how we're going to get your credit score back up. Or you're looking for, or you've never had credit in your life, and you're looking for a way in which you can obtain credit and still increase your credit score. This is the credit card you can go for. Mm. And, your credit, and your credit card, if you use it like this, your credit score will increase. So that's the sort of stuff I do with the credit score side. Then the second one, which as of recently, I would say I've got a lot of messages about, is getting a mortgage. Mm. You know, I feel as if like, bro, uh, I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm breaking people's heart when I'm giving them information about mortgages. <laughs> because <laughs> I had someone the other day hit me up like, yeah, I've been looking at 400k houses, bro. I'm going to buy a 400. I was like, oh, that's sick, bro. Like, like, yeah, I've got the deposit ready. Boom, boom. Like, so I said, oh, fine. Cool. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> for you like yeah let's get it <laughs> bro we sat down looked at his income bro he couldn't yeah. even afford half of that yeah purely because 
And this is no shade on him, purely because he didn't know what the process was. Yeah, because obviously it, 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 the mortgage you can get is... Income multiple of your yeah, salary yeah. Then plus your deposit. He's never, ever sat down with someone. He's just assumed that by hearing deposit, people talk, that yeah, is fine. Yeah. So I was just like, bro, I get it, but this is what you're looking at now. But if you want to get there, this is your plan. This is what we need to do. This is what you need to have in place to ensure that if you do want a property of that amount, that you can get it. But at the moment, this is where you're at. So yeah. that's another service I offer, just helping people understand where they are with their mortgage, what they can do, and just reviewing that process for them. Yeah. And giving them everything that they would normally get later on, but telling them now so that they can prepare themselves better yeah. is what I do. So th- those are two main services that I offer. Yeah, so you man. can actually book on my um, page, you can click on my calendar, put yourself in and stuff like that nice. as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, nice. And so going back to work soon, how do you how do you balance the two? Yeah, well, to be honest, as you can imagine, I've never had to because I literally did CK Talks money for two yeah, weeks true. before being made redundant. So this is actually the first time that I'm going to have to balance the two. Now, no one should judge me if they don't see post for a week or two. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> no, we but forgive you. We forgive I'm you. learning that preparation and structure mm. is key. When you're organised, you're good because I know, I have a friend who has a page as well. She makes her content. She'll like today, she'll make like six yeah. videos. Yeah. Literally. And then when you're seeing them in a month or two, you're thinking, right, like she's proper like productive, but really she's been doing this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's how I'm probably gonna do it. I'm yeah. just gonna be making stuff and planning ahead. Cause before, like, well, as it's been, I'm at home. I could wake up in the morning, see a bit of sun coming through the window and say, <laughs> you know what, it's a nice day outside. Let me open the curtains, put the ring light on, let's get it. <laughs> but now I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have to be prepared. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. gonna have to be prepared and you know, like even little things. I have a whiteboard in my room. Mm. So even planning with the whiteboard, using nice. my diary, these are all the sort of things that will be components of my planning. Nice. You know, so yeah, man. That's yeah. it. Yeah, no, nice. It's uh that's that's the 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 batch kind of mm. preparing um content is a good one, yeah. No, I real. use this uh I use this app. I'm gonna, I need to stop using it though. Stop. Um, <laughs> no, you know why? Actually, I'm not even going to plug it. They don't sponsor this podcast. What am, I, what am I about to say their name for? What? Are you mad? Tell me later. Tell me later. Tell me later. Tell me later. <laughs> you can tell me later. <laughs> um, no, so I use them. And basically, the, the, the color, right? Yeah. This blue, for example. Yeah, okay. Whenever I try to post, the, uh, uh, post something through that app, yeah. this blue always comes out weird. Oh, okay. It comes out weird. So you'll okay. see, if you, scroll, if you scroll through my Instagram, yeah, yeah. you know, basically, I have like... The left column is bl- the left yeah. column is blue and yeah, it's yeah, black yeah. black. Here. Got you, got you. Yeah, if yeah. you scroll down the blue column, you'll yeah. see the one that I'm talking about. Uh, it right, drives jarring. me insane. Bro. <laughs> that's jarring. <laughs> it drives me insane. Literally, yeah. I try not to scroll down on my Instagram anymore because I hate seeing it. <laughs> it. Bro, little things like this piss me off, you know. I hear you. So I need to, I'm, I'm gonna stop using that flipping. App. So, like, so I, the, the point I'm making is I actually yeah. did used to kind of batch produce yeah, my, yeah, my content for them, especially like my quotes because yeah. I like to put quotes on there. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but when I it was doing that, I just stopped. So now. That's why my, my 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 posts have been a, li- a little more re- irregular yeah, than yeah, usual yeah. Nah, because I'm you. trying to do it myself now. Oh, it's it's all learning, man. Yeah, nah, nah, this thing you're learning every day because Instagram in itself is changing every yeah. day. Nah, facts. They're always moving the algorithm and changing stuff around. So it, it's it's no shade on you that you're still learning or trying to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Like even me myself, I've changed my. If you if you scroll down mine as well, you'll see <laughs> you'll see the changes and you will see the point where oh, so that's why he started doing this thing that makes. You'll even see some points. You'll say, "What was this guy even doing?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he all right? Like, what's going on? So you, nah. it's, it's a process, bro. Yeah, it's a process. It's and a process. so, so talking about learning, then um, mm. I've actually got two questions, which are both yeah, tied man. to what we've just been discussing. So the yeah. first question, I'm going to ask them both because I'm going to forget one. Cool, if I don't. Nah, that's cool. Man. Uh, the first question is yeah. how do you um, how do you keep on top of not necessarily yeah. on top of your content creation? Because obviously we're just discussing kind of what your plan is in terms of course, of yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of what you post, the content you post, how got do you, you. Um, keep you. on top of that and know what to post and when? Yeah. Uh, and where'd you get your kind of inspiration from, should I say? Yeah. And the second question, look at that, I've forgotten it. Bloody hell. <laughs> what was the second one? No, so we're talking about learning. Yeah. I've got it, it's back to yeah. you, don't worry. Uh, we're talking about learning. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm going to write these down before. Write it, please. <laughs> you me, I've forgotten it. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, cool. No, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll do it one, yeah. one at a time then. So yeah, just because I've written it down, that's fine. Yeah, that's uh, cool. What, um, how do you keep on top of your content creation? And then In terms of what I decide to post? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. no. So that's another conversation I had recently. I was, so my bio used to say mortgages, credit, savings, budget, etc. Yeah. 
And then I thought to myself, I shouldn't just want to talk about stuff because everyone else is talking about it, mm. you know? So I'm not that guy that if everyone's talking about this amazing savers account, you're going to see me as what well. I'm not, I'm not on that. My posts are purely based on experience or what I feel as if people need to hear. So a lot of my content is like a mortgage process, mm. um, tips for those who are looking to buy things you shouldn't do if you're looking to buy. So I, what I do is just like, there's a guy called um, Harry Needham, very mm. great content creator on Instagram. And he says this thing where he says, great content isn't posting loads of things about everything. It's posing, it's posting loads of things about a genuine interest. Mm. You can imagine when you're building a profile or a community on Instagram, yeah, people follow you for a reason. If you have... 10 videos you've done in a three month space and you're talking about, let's say you're talking about Adidas, yes sir, and people who love Adidas follow you, there's a reason that they're following you. Mm. If you now start talking about every other brand, you're going to lose that niche of people who are following yeah. you for that reason. You yeah. know what I mean? So I've literally pinned my stuff down to, on my notes section of my phone, it's literally, how many things can I educate people on in regards to credit scoring, and mortgages in the house buying process. Mm. That's what I've teed it down to. Because one, it's what I'm actually passionate about. So I don't ever feel like I'm posting stuff and not being real and just posting stuff that I don't care about. And two, it's where I add the most value. Mm. And the main aim of this is to add value. Mm. I thought as if on social media, you get so tied into, oh, everyone else is doing this. I should do one on that as well. Nah, man, I'm not, I'm not really here for that because... I'm putting my time and effort into this. So the least I can do is whatever I'm posting, let me even enjoy it. <laughs> because before I'm now posting about stuff that like, yeah. I've had people hit me up for podcasts and IG lives and say, oh, can we talk about this? And I've had to say, you know what? Like, I appreciate the shout, but I'm happy to do it. But I don't, I don't really know much about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't want to now spend the next three days doing research online and doing homework <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that I can go on your kidney. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let me talk about what I can actually add value in mm. regards to. So yeah, man, that's how I decide. I have a note section. I literally write down loads of different things that I can talk about. And then that's that really. Yeah. Yeah, nah, man. Nice. And then um, the second question was yeah. in regards to, because again, we were talking about learning. Yeah, um, yeah. So what, what would you say you've learned over the journey of, from even when you first October started your mortgage, uh, even, oh, from, yeah. before, okay, even cool, from before cool. that, just, yeah, yeah. just the journey, in your journey overall, what would yeah. you say you've learned that you've kind of been, has stuck with you and that you've been implementing in terms yeah. of your, your business acumen and, mm. and going forward, if you like? The thing is, the biggest thing for me is, one thing from, one from my boy always says to me, he always calls me a serial networker. Mm. So one thing I will say is that never shy away from reaching out to people. Mm. Whether that's at your job, whether you're an entrepreneur and you see someone doing what you're doing and you want to connect with them, never shy away because I feel as if as as a society, we nearly feel as if, oh, no, I can't shout that person there. They're too, they're, they're, they're too big or no, I can't do that. Or you're at work and you say, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just a cashier. I can't go and speak to them lot about whatever. But in that exact thought process, you're limiting yourself. Mm. You're limiting what you can learn what you could potentially learn. So that's the biggest thing for me because what I've never shied, what, even from Metro, remember I told you earlier about they allowed me to shadow and stuff yeah. like that. That was all as a result of me um, asking. Yeah. You know, just asking, asking my manager like, yo, I don't know what these lot do. Can I sit with them? And I've just kind of carried that along with me. You know, it didn't always work in the football days because I had a boy that used, my brother used to play for Chelsea. I said, oh, bro, I beg you let me come training. He was like, it doesn't work like that. You can't just come training. I'm like, no, nah, bro, I've got my boots. Like, I'm good, like, let's go. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't always work. It doesn't, I'm, I'm, that's just a disclaimer. It doesn't always work. A subject to availability, as we say in banking, like, <laughs> subject. But, like, don't shy away, man. Mm. If you want to work with someone, hit them up. Mm. Hit them up, like, just ask them. You know, because I feel as if like sometimes people can literally limit their own progress mm. by keeping quiet, you know, and it's something that I've always said to my people as well. Like, you like what my man's doing, you want to do something similar, hit him up, mm. shout him. That's that's how things should be. That's the biggest thing for me, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's the biggest thing for me. No, nice, nice. Boy. And so how would you say the, uh, yeah. the journey's been so far then from this hey. one, particularly from October now? My brother, it's going okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving. You know, yeah. we've made a lot of progress. My following's 
gone. No, yeah, I've grown a lot quicker than I expected. Nice. And that hap- I noticed that in the first month because my guy was like, "Bro, have you seen your following?" I was like, "What?" I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, bro, like that's mad." He was like, "Bro, like you're actually rapidly growing." But that also meant that due to me not planning enough at the start. I had to start rushing things. I had to mm. get a website done. I had to do this. I had to create this, create that. I had to get a media kit. Like these are all things that I should have done before. Mm. Things that I should have been doing, mm. but I didn't do it. So because of the, the the rate of growth, I was like boom, 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 boom. I just had to start doing stuff quickly. We've hit roadblocks. You know, I've done posts whereby I'm thinking, why aren't people really feeling this one? Mm. Like, what's wrong with it? Or is it the time I've posted? Is it the Instagram? I don't know. What what is it? I've reached out to people and they've been like, yo, they're not supporting the thing. You know what I mean? So, and it's like, these things happen mm. and they are always going to happen. And my initial issue was that I always kind of expected things to go smooth. Mm. I'm quite a chill person. So it's like, I never expect there to be bumps. I'm thinking as long as I'm doing the right thing, I should feel right. Place, yeah. But sometimes when you're even doing the right thing, things can still happen, you know? Mm. So it's been a good journey. It's been amazing and there's still more to come. But I feel like every day I'm just learning. Every day I'm just learning, bro. Nice, nice, yeah, nice. Nice, no, that's good. Oh, boy. I love that story. Bro. Come on, man. That, 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 that's been, uh, that's been inspiring. Thank I do you, like bro, that. Man. I do like that. So uh, what's what's next for you then? What's next? What you got, what you got planned for the pipeline? Oh, we got a lot planned, man. There's a lot coming. That note section is full, yeah. Bro, it's packed. It's packed. Even I was, when I, bro, when I when I say certain things, I laugh. People think it's a joke, but when I talk about when I see the sun and I open the curtains, I did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the sun was out. I, sun was I, was I, I said, "Listen, curtains open." <laughs> Instagram will see my Listen, face. Listen, you're even cream your face well. <laughs> like you're going to church, or you cream it well. You get me, like so. Things are coming. We've got content coming. Some great collabs. Um, nice. For those on Clubhouse, every Tuesday, myself and Savvy Wallet do a Clubhouse session mm. as well. We've got Instagram lives coming, recordings. Oh, we've got a lot coming, man. Nice. Got a lot coming. Service in the community, man. <laughs> <laughs> you love Service to see it, man. You love to see it. And um, you um, briefly touched on Roblox, actually. Yeah. In terms of, uh, are there kind of any, I guess... I don't want really to say major challenges, but again, mm. from from the first business, yeah. for cool. example, are there yeah. any, um, again, I know I mentioned kind of learning earlier, but are there any cool. challenges that yeah. you face that you're kind of like, rah, and in a sense that you kind of, again, I guess, learn from yeah. in terms of in terms of the business then? I guess the biggest thing I've learned is it's about support mm. and how you view support because the first ever broadcast I sent my phone was going off. Oh, bro, this is amazing. Mm. When I announced it, oh, it's amazing, bro. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, every, everybody wants to CK do. talks, let's yeah, go. Yeah, cool, yeah, Everyone, everyone's doing it. Even like, trap my starts, like, everyone's gassed. You get me? Like, everyone's excited. Yeah. And I remember that time, like, I was sat and I was, I can't remember who I was with, but I was like, yes, you look all these responses, mm. like, I'm going to blow, like, you're even, you're just, you're just happy. <laughs> you're just a happy man. <laughs> so now, a couple of weeks down the line, three, I remember it was three weeks in and my friend Anita called me. She was like, oh, I love what you're doing. But I just, it was just on my spirit to tell you something. I said, what? She was like, you're going to get to a point where all these people supporting you aren't going to support you no more. Mm. And you need to make sure that the reason you're doing this isn't because of the people supporting you, but that you understand your why. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I appreciate that, sis. Like, thank you so much. Bro, after like a month and a half, I started to see what she was talking about. I started to, because of all the shares and the likes and this and that, I started to center my progress around what people thought of what I was doing mm. rather than centering it around the reason I started what I was doing. Mm. And it hit me because I remember there was a week and I was annoyed. I was thinking, why are these people like doing this thing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I start to get frustrated. And I remembered what she said and I was like, this is what she meant, mm. you know? And the biggest thing I'll say to people is, your market, if you're in a business that's going to make you money or whatever, your market as to where you're going to grow the most isn't always amongst the people that you know personally. Yeah, You know what I mean? It's going to be the people that, see your post randomly on the explore page and they say oh I, I genuinely like that I don't know him or her 
but I genuinely like that. Mm. That's where your market is. And this is also why I talk about not shying away because the people that know you immediately, and it's weird because it's like people who know you personally nearly take you less seriously. Yeah, and I no. don't know why that is. No, it's, it's really weird, but it's like you expect that, oh, no, that's my friend. Like, if I'm doing this, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to, you know, support yeah. me. Like, no issue there. But then the support you get is from the people that you've never met. Mm. People that you don't even know from Adam. You just know their Instagram name and that's it. So <laughs> that that's probably what I would say was the biggest struggle. And for that, I'll probably put, down, put that more down to a mentality. Yeah. Having a mentality whereby rather than um, feeling grat- um, gratified by what people say, you're satisfied by what you're doing. Yeah. And you're satisfied by the reason that you're doing it. Because before all the support, <clears throat> you started anyway. Mm. So what's the reason you started? What pushed you to start? And don't lose track of that. Yeah. Because it's very easy to, you know, people get lost in, lost in the source as we say, and <laughs> they, they, they change their reason or their, their why might even change, you know? So just mm. keep, keep your head level, keep your head straight. That's what I will say, man. No, that's powerful. Yeah, man. I like that. Wow. My guy. <laughs> My Nike, you know. That, that, that was... Uh... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you two more questions. Yeah, man. Two more Come questions. On, bro. So the first one, although you've actually said quite a lot that could fall as into yeah. an answer to this question, cool. But I'll still ask anyway, just in case you're able to, um, yeah. to to think of something else. Yeah. Um, but what advice would you give to uh, the aspiring entrepreneur, business owner, somebody yeah. who wants to go into business for themselves, anything or whether even it is in within kind of mortgage advice and yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of financial the financial space. Yeah, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna speak directly to mortgage advisors, potential mortgage advisors, and there are some that hit me up and ask me how they can be qualified and stuff like that. The first thing I'll say is just, it's going to sound very cliche, but trust the process as they say, but mm-hmm. I'm going to explain what I mean when I say that. Trusting the process in terms of when you start as a mortgage advisor, all this great money that you're hearing that mortgage advisors are going to make, you're not going to see that at the beginning. Mm. You're not. Let, I'm just being point blank. You're not going to see that. You're going to have to put in work. You're going to have to do applications. You're going to have to sit in appointments with people who you build so much rapport with to the point that you are one million percent sure they're going to use you and they're going to go somewhere else. Like, I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it. Too. Like, I'm telling you, bro. So trust the process that you're on. Mm. Don't rush it because I'm, I'm a... Ugh. I'm the worst or was the worst when it comes to Russian stuff. <laughs> I'll be doing it, I'll be like, oh no, but I need to do this now. I need to pattern this. And, but just take things slow mm. because sometimes the things that are going to actually benefit you the most don't always come at the start. They might come after some work or after you've done a few things. So just don't rush anything that you're doing and also be prepared and plan. You know, so if you do want to become a mortgage advisor, start telling people. Yeah. Literally, even if it's just, oh yeah, bro, like, I'm doing my mortgage exams and I'm about to start soon, but just like tell your mum and dad, like just let them know because what you want and what I, what it became for me was that whenever anyone around me thought about property or mortgages, I was the first they will call. Mm. So whoever they speak to, they'll tell them, oh, just call, call CK, call Clarence, like he'll, he'll sort you out. That's how it became. It becomes like a, your name becomes like a, a ringing um, subject in that community when it comes to that thing. Mm. So always spread the word as much as you can if it's Instagram, Twitter. I know Clubhouse is new and everyone's using it now, but if you see rooms they're talking about property, you know, if you just want to jump in there and say, hello, I do mortgages. Anybody wants to hit me up, here's my so-and-so. Just do that. Make mm-hmm. yourself seen because it's very easy to disappear in this world if you keep your mouth quiet. Yeah, You know what I mean? So yeah. make yourself seen. That's what I say to mortgage advisors as well and be, um, and be prepared. There's not a lot of planning you can always do as a mortgage advisor because you don't know what's going to come. Yeah. The housing market can be a bit funny at times as we've seen. So it's like, make yourself seen and plan. Yeah. That's what I'd say, man. No, nice, yeah. nice. Thank you. No worries, bro. And um, <clears throat> uh, what does success mean to you? Success? Oh, man. Success to me, personally, is knowing that I have an income that I'm, let's say, comfortable with mm. and that I can live a good lifestyle of, but I'm still with my family. Mm. I can still spend time with my family. I don't have to do the whole, ah, I can't go to Christmas assembly because I'm in, you know what I mean? I've always wanted that flexibility 
to be around. Mm. I always want to be there and uh, and available, you know, and to be able to bless those around me. Mm. That goes from my mum, dad, to the pe- to to my brother who wants to start a business and might need me to support him, you know, because I feel as if when I hear pe- about people talk about success, it's always very personal. But what is personal to me is me doing well, but also seeing the people around me doing well as well. Mm. So yeah, that's what success is to me, man. Nice, nice, nice. Well, Clarence, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, bro. Man, that that was uh, that was amazing. Thank you, man. That was amazing. Wow. Um, Actually, have you got any uh, parting um, parting gems regarding kind of mortgage and credit that you can impart onto the listeners here? Yeah, you know what? The first gem I'll say is if you're not following CK Talks Money, you're slacking. (laughs) Yeah, you need to be following. That everything's there. But I will just say that um, one thing that I will say actually is in terms of your it's hard for me to make a general statement about affordability and stuff because everyone's different, but just don't rush anything mm. because I've seen people jump into a property purchase and wish that they waited a year or two. Okay. You know what I mean? As crazy as that sounds, there are people that they're like, they're just so itching to buy a property that they buy it mm. and they realise, man, I should have just saved a little bit more or just mm. had a bit more money to decide before buying this because this mortgage is, it's an asset, but it's a burden, mm. you know? So I would say just don't rush it, man. If you ever want to talk about your mortgage situation, budget criteria, hit me up, man. I, I reply to DMs. You know what I mean? I'm not this guy that's just going to leave you, leave you leave you unseen and then you'll see me popping bottles in the, in the, in the, in the mandem. <laughs> you get me? So like, I'm telling you, like, if you want to hit me up, talk about it, we can chop it up. Let's do it. Nice. Yeah, and so right. on that note, yes, yes, where yes. can people find you if they want to hit you up? Yeah, so Instagram or Twitter at CK Talks Money. Um, Clubhouse also CK Talks Money and my email and stuff's all on there. I have a link on my Instagram bio for a calendar as well. So you can always hit me up as well. Mm. Um, when I go home, I could have this, uh, could have this episode. I'm gonna go and speak to my sister about the website. The website will be up <laughs> soon as well. <laughs> so that, that, yeah, I've been yeah. sitting on that team for a long time. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, you've got, um, you've got, uh, yeah. you've got two weeks to pad that out. Two this, weeks, bro. Out, oh. so. <laughs> oh, God, don't worry. Well, two and a half actually. You'll be ready. You'll be ready. <laughs> yeah, so sure. yeah, you can find me on Insta mainly. CK talks money. Yeah. That's my main spot. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Well. Darius, yeah. it's been a pleasure. It's nice meeting you. First and you, bro, man. It's been it's a blessing. The first time we meet. It's been absolutely it's been hilarious. It's been a blessing, man, for real. Um, nah, so I wish you and CK yeah. Talks Money all the best. Thank you, bro, I'll be man. tuning Same in. I'll be you. supporting. Thank you, bro. Uh, yeah, I want to see that grow, man. My guy. Like, bro, from this Thank conversation, you, bro, you're man. a great guy. Man. I appreciate so, uh, that, bro. I wish you the best for that, man. Thank you, brother. No worries. Thank you, bro. Well, guys, another episode wrapped in the bag. Clarence, founder of CK Talks Money took the time out of his day to come and join me, which we really appreciate. So once again, thank you yes. very much. No worries, bro, man. Thanks for having me. Guys, like I said at the start, if you're watching on YouTube, the Fantastic Four, like, comment, share, subscribe. That is it. You know what the best thing about all of that is? You don't even need Clarence to tell you. It's free to do. You can just do it. Quick thing. Like, no, co- comment, no share, cost. Subscribe. You get me? <laughs> Quick thing. No cost. <laughs> like, comment, share, subscribe. Also, make sure you go check out Clarence on all his platforms as well. Support that. And obviously, for those needing the advice, make sure you holler him. Guys, if you listen on Apple Music, please, the fantastic five stars, like I said, just give me a five star rating. Again, it's completely free of charge. Please also feel free to drop a comment. Let me know what you like and don't like about the podcast. But I've been your host, Spaney, joined by my lovely guest, Clarence. Guys, this has been The Black Print. Until next week, peace.